everybody, today we're going to be talking about guitars inside Logic Pro 10. And in spite of what you might have heard, Logic has a ton of really great guitar features and plugins and MIDI effects. So we're going to start with this little mini series this week, just talking about some of the things that it has for guitars. Today we're going to talk about what you can do with Logic if you don't even have a guitar. Uh, some of the guitar strumming effects and the, the actual sampled instruments and or the synthesized modeled instruments that can really replace a guitar sound. So we're going to look at what we can do with those. And it's surprisingly good considering what it is. And then in additional videos, we'll look at the amp designer and we'll also look at the pedal board. So other tools that are really cool and really powerful inside Logic. But you need to actually do some stuff sometimes to get the sound you want. You can't just use presets most of the time. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. I hope you enjoy this. We're going to get into the software in just one second. I just want to say one more thing before we do. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Turn on that notification bell. If you're enjoying the content, we don't ask much. Just share the videos with people who you think might be interested, your classmates at school who are doing some of this stuff, or friends they have on Facebook or whatever. Just share this so we can get the word out about some of these videos and reach a bigger audience. So again, thanks so much for watching and let's dive in and look at some of these tools inside Logic right now. Okay, so we're gonna start with an empty session here. Before we do the guitar thing, I just wanna add a drummer track. This always helps just in terms of making sure that you're hearing things in context rather than all by itself sometimes. Let's see what we have here in terms of this sound. And that's okay, that'll work for now. Nothing fancy, I just literally wanna have something in the background uh, to give us a, a good sense of that. I am gonna put on, now that I think about it, just a quick limiter just to beef up the sound a little bit. And that's because we're gonna use some a little bit bigger guitar sounds. Okay, so now for guitar, we have a, a bunch of different options here in our instrument library. We have things that have effects on them. We have acoustic guitars. We have a bunch of things. I'm going to enable patch merging for a second and just turn off the sends and the audio effects. I just want to hear some of these completely without that. So an acoustic guitar harmonic sound. Takes a second. Here's our hard rock. And that's without the effects. So this is a vintage Strat sample. Not a bad one to start with sometimes. Okay, so we have to kind of decide if we want to use one of the samples or if we want to come in and use something like Sculpture, which has some guitar sounds as well. Now, the reason why sometimes I like Sculpture is because it has a little bit more character to it. It's going to have some variation. It's not always going to sound exactly the same. So we have, for instance, a, a Strat, a couple different Strats, a Telecaster, um, let's see, we do have some more like uh, acoustic type sounding things. Let's just do. Okay, so as a sound source, I think it's okay. Um, we're going to be able to work with it a little bit. Now, the first thing I want to show you today is our strummer effect. Here's the, the actual script editor for that. Let's pull this up. So we're going to do, um, there's a few different things we could be doing in here, but today we're going to look at the strummer specifically, but there are a few other ones that could apply to guitar type effects. So we have two basic things here. We have a strum and an arpeggiator. To change uh, my octave so it's in front of me more. 
And uh, the top half then is going to sound like notes. So we have notes on the right hand of the keyboard, and then it just repeats the strumming uh, all the way down every octave. We have a bunch of parameters here. We can set the, the direction, and actually it will go back and forth. So it's going to rotate them a little bit. Um, we do have some division curve, some random division, some velocity curve, some random velocity. So all of those things are going to add a little bit of humanness into them, which is something you miss if you don't have that. We also have an arpeggiator. Uh, I just missed a couple notes there. But... So interesting thing there as well. All of these tie into the chords that we choose in here with the chord assignments. So I can change the chords up if I want to. I'm going to leave them as they are for now. Uh, we can't change the voicings of them exactly. We do have one, uh, somewhat one option, which is that we can do power chord instead of just the major. <laughs> So instead of having the actual harmony notes, it, it's just giving you uh, the cleaner version of it. But it kind of is like a major type uh, filler or replacement. So we have both of those we can use. Now, because today we don't want to sound exactly like that, we want to actually add a little character. We are going to add on here uh, the amp designer. And then we'll just put something basic, just a preset for today. Um, let's see. And um, we're not going to do too much with that. Writing it up there with that. Uh, we're going to talk more about that in a separate video because I think that it definitely warrants a whole video all by itself, talking about how to, to mix and match and manipulate that so you get a better sound out of it. The last thing I'll talk about this before we move on is that we have in here in the script editor all of the chord layouts. If you want to do some of your own chords, it's easy just to copy and paste and to change some of these things up so that you can do your own chords. Uh, and just follow the exact example here of how they're laying this out. And then you just rerun the script and it will add those into its menu. So you can do custom chords as well. I haven't figured out yet. I haven't looked deep enough to figure out if I can do a different pattern when it comes to the arpeggiator. But that's something I want to look into and actually be able to add some different patterns to it. Okay, so... Let's talk then about this because there are some ways that we can use this uh, in an actual project. I actually want to show you, explore a little bit of how to, to combine some of these different things. So um, let's just do a simple chord pattern. Now, and actually I want to do, for this first one, I want to do the actual, uh, let's see, undo that one, yeah. Strum first. Okay, we don't need to do that second part. Let's listen.
Okay, so what we want to do now is have it switch sometimes between the strum and the arpeggiator. So we can come through here and we can change how that's actually going to work. So we have our line here and let's zoom in a little bit because I want to be able to see a little bit better. And let's close some of this other stuff down. So listening back. <laughs> So for the very first two, I want to actually move those into the arpeggiation version. And then we'll do the same for this. Except maybe just that first one. Let's hear. Do the same for that this one right here so we'll pull it up and then pull it right back down Okay, so when it's looping, it's having a hard time with that very last little bit. So let's make sure that this thing goes up right at the end to make sure that it knows that it's re-triggering for the arpeggiator at the end. Still having a little bit of an issue there. Anyway, it looks like it's having a little bit of a blip on that loop point, but I'm not going to worry about that too much right this second. Okay, so you get to, you get the idea of how we can come in here and customize this and control between the arpeggiated version and the strum version. So that definitely adds a lot of power to how we're going to do this, and I think it makes it pretty great. So let's do one more thing here. I want to go back and switch out to one of those other guitars without the effects on them and just leave the effect that we have on there. But let's also turn off MIDI effects so that it doesn't get erased too. Here we go. So we're going to have a lot to talk about when we start talking about actually designing sounds. But the last thing I want to do today, knowing that we're not getting into that, is just to point you on one more tool which helps when using these fake guitars and not using a real one. What we want to do is come through here to our tuning page. And we want to use the Hermode tuning. And we'll use that with the Pop Jazz. And this actually... Is something I try on or off for a particular guitar source and also as it goes through all of the amps and things because sometimes uh, it sounds better when it's tuned slightly tighter and you get less of the distortion that sounds obnoxious and sometimes it sounds completely wrong for this because it actually makes it sound too in tune. It just really depends on the situation but it's something I always try when I get closer to end of a uh, deciding if I'm using that sound or not.
yeah, we're going to have a lot to talk about in the next video when we start talking about sculpting the sound and actually getting it to sound like a real guitar. But I hope so far this is useful, just looking at some of the basic tools we have in terms of getting a guitar sound. Maybe if you don't have a guitar or if you just want to use something like this where you're not necessarily um, pulling out your rig and miking up the amp and all this stuff. Say you're stuck at home with the basement and that's, I mean, you could do that in a closet, but you're going to be questionable whether you're going to get better performances or not or better sounds or not. And some of you are definitely capable of doing that. And some of you may think, you know what, maybe I should just put this all in the box for this particular part and we're going to be okay. Okay, hope this was helpful and useful. Uh, like I said before, subscribe, like, share, do all those things so we can keep on putting out great content for this channel. Hope you're all being safe and we will do another video soon on the guitar stuff.